Welcome back and thank you very much. We're getting into our news review segment. I've been joined by my two guests, lawyer Abraham Maliba is a member of the NDC's legal team. He also does communication for them. Counsel, good morning. How are you doing? I'm quite well. You're you are not too well? I'm not too well. We are in an excruciating economy. The economy is biting. And so I cannot be well when the economy is not uh, treating me well. So that's why I'm saying I am quite well. But you look well. Yes, because I have decided to soldier on okay. in the midst of challenges. I have decided that I won't allow the excruciating economy to put me down. Mm. That is the spirit. Stephen. Amwa is the boss at Maslock. Stephen, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Stephen, Thank you for having you? me on your set. Thank you. Stephen, how are you? By the grace of God, I'm doing tremendously well. Right. And I'll use the opportunity to wish mm. the chief imam, the great man, a happy birthday. Right. Uh, I wish I could be, um, I could double his age. Right. God has blessed him so much. Mm. And also to say kudos to the Otun for mm. 20 years um, as a king, the great successes that um, as Antiman and the entire country mm. we have chalked as a result of his um, remarkable, illustrious, and um, great leadership. Mm. He's done so much well. So it looks like tradition and religion. Right, and absolutely. This is what we have to mm. dwell on, their role in our society. I think mean, they've done so much well. They've done well. And uh, Aziz Dola is watching from Wa. He says uh, with his family, Aziz, good morning to you. They will start off, uh, Council, let's start with the Chief Imam. We saw him on Sunday. He did what many call the undoable, where he went to take a front pew uh, in a Catholic church and he participated in the full service. We, we know that the chief imam is an exemplary figure, but this is a notch higher. Today is 100 years. What are your thoughts? Well, let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. There's something you need to know. The Muslims see Catholics as their natural allies. <clears throat> When you talk to a Muslim one on one, they will tell you that if they were to convert mm -hmm. into Christianity, the denomination that they would uh, convert into would have been the Catholic Church. So even though I never knew this coming, mm -hmm. but I knew, uh, I wasn't surprised that he chose the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. This chief imam is naturally a man of peace. Mm. He exudes it. <clears throat> you know, you look at his demeanor. It tells you that this is a, 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 a cleric whose main objective mm. is to preach peace. So when I heard that he had gone to the church to celebrate with Christians uh, uh, as a result of his birthday coinciding with the Easter festivities, mm. I thought that once again, he has shown the way. Mm. Once again, he has made it happen. Mm. When I heard people criticizing him, you know, some people, <laughs> I don't know, uh, sort of made comments to the effect that as a Muslim cler cleric, he shouldn't have done that. Right. I thought that these are people who were speaking from an ignorant point, point of, of view. view. Mm. This act of the chief imam has even been commended the world all over. It was on BBC. I don't know where you heard it. This singular act of the chief imam at a time when Muslims are, at, are being attacked in New Zealand, just yesterday in Sri Lanka, mm. churches were bombed. At that time, when the, the, the whole world is seeking for answers mm. and seeing that terrorism doesn't know whether you are a Christian, 
or you are a Muslim. Mm -hmm. At this time, you have our most senior Muslim cleric walk into a church, mm -hmm. and you have some people thinking otherwise of what he did. Does it, does it deepen interfaith tolerance, this act of the chief imam, his eminence? I even think it goes beyond deepening the faith. What do? I, I think that it gives a signal to the whole nation that even your, your opponent, and I'm talking about politicians now, mm. can still come close to you and you celebrate with that person. Okay. Stephen, step in for me. The chief imam is 100 and he's done what, and again I repeat, what many think is undoable. <laughs> he set another record. Uh, uh, he went into the church and stayed there for the full stretch, you know, with, with uh, them. And some say this will deepen interfaith tolerance in this country. Is that an argument you want to agree with? Um, I think so. Um, it is something that all of us will have to actually give credence to. Uh, he's done something that is sending a signal to us as a nation and even to the world. I think the world will have to emulate what he's done. Um, I have been having a great deal of respect for him. Okay. And admire him greatly. Not because only he is the chief imam. But I think he's somebody that exudes tranquility and harmony. And his leadership style seems to be something that actually diffuses mm the misconception a lot of people generalize about Islam and Muslims. And what he's done, mm -hmm. I am not surprised because of the way I see him even from a distance, okay. the kind of person he okay. is. Mm -hmm. So I'm not astonished not surprised. at all. I'm not puzzled okay. because I know he, can, he could do that and he's done it. Except that I think sometimes if somebody can master that courage mm -hmm. and boldness and bravery, anticipating the criticisms that will ensue. Mm. And yet, he moves beyond that criticisms that he anticipated. And he's a very smart man. He knew people would criticize him. But hey, a man of God, such mm. a great leader, is he about criticisms? Is he about attacks? Mm. No. It's about he trying to foster the unity that we need as a nation and as a globe. Mm. One thing that I will say is that it has to really deepen okay. our quest to ensuring that as a nation, whether you're a Muslim or a Christian, okay. particularly the young people, we need to follow this huge example. We need to, because look, all over the world. The chief imam made the call mm -hmm. to the church that mm -hmm. he wants to celebrate his 100th with them. Exactly. And those who are critics, I'm surprised. Is it not the same God? Yeah. I'm asking, is it not the same God? Let's look at even the Bible. Abraham and the wife and the maid, Ishmael and Isaac, what happened? Is it not the same Abraham mm. that God promised? Is it not the same Abraham whose descendants are Muslims and Christians today? How, how you understand what I'm saying? How, so we are one people, basically. That's what I mm. see. Because but, I can't remember, I can't really cook. Should this be the template for other religious leaders in this country to follow of so course. that we will not have of the kind of turf war of course. that seems to be you know, present. You, you know, my concentration was not on that. What you are saying, perfectly I agree with you. But my con hardly you see those at the top of these religious um, structures right. engaging in antisocial behaviors that will create conflict. I mean, even conflict, we have positive and negative right. conflict, but the destructive ones. However, the followers, the young people, okay. being Christians and Muslims, they normally forget about the fact that religion is about peace. It's about following the things of God. And it's the same God. Except that the way other people, be I believe I have to go to God through Jesus Christ. 
I wouldn't condemn any other person who thinks he has, he has to go to God through. And about the fact of the matter is that God has certain characteristics that we <sighs> have to follow. And that is exactly the chief imam's role that he's playing in society now. And that is what we have to be very careful the okay. way we go about friends as Christians and as Muslims. Right. And we have to lead this country. Okay. That thing has to also be transcends or tra sorry, has to be transferred into mm -hmm. even our politics. Okay. Our socioeconomic endeavor as a people to ensure that wherever we find peace and tranquility, wherever there's cohesion, wherever people are living together and living Christ-like life or godly life, that nation grows and expands. It's in the Bible. So we should be very careful. One thing that I will end is that people should look at this and stop condemning each other. Mm -hmm. That this church is good. This, no, I don't believe in that. Because look, God told, said something to Ishmael's mother. Wait, wait, wait. Now, Ishmael, you have, you have the preached, mother... You have preached enough, Stephen. Thank you very okay. much. Uh, we're, actually we're, we're moving on. Thank we're you. grateful. Your message is clear. Uh, Otum 482 on Sunday also made uh, a very categorical statement as he celebrated his 20th anniversary on the throne, the golden stool. He says, don't let politics divide us. Council, are, are we divided? And uh, the two force call, is it timely? But also, over the weekend too, we had the Yana ah, yes. also pay a visit mm. to the Asante Hene with his entourage. I'm told, when the Yana arrived, mm. the streets of Kumasi came to a standstill. Mm. That's the kind of thing we want. This unity of purpose, oneness, mm. no division. I have always said that we must always process what is in our thoughts before we speak out in public. You may dislike somebody, but for the sake of the greater good, you need to suppress those things. The Otun Four has always been constant in his message towards national peace. Anytime he has opportunity to address the nation through his, uh, uh, his, his own activities, mm. he doesn't shy away from making these points that go a long way to unite the nation. Mm. Indeed, he's had opportunity to, 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 to sternly warn politicians who visit him and mm. tell them not to take the people down the road of destruction. He's done mm. that. He speaks his mind. Right. So this is also a feather in our cap as a nation. Mm. What I have realized in this country is that politics is the one that is a dividing factor. Is it? It is. Why, why should it be so? Because the stakes are always high. Because of this winner takes all. Because some people do not get any work to do mm. if their party is in opposition. They, they, they labor to eat. They have invested everything in politics. Mm. They have not diversified their effort to be able to do something else. So that's why it is so divisive. Now, if you listen to Otunfo, what he sought to recommend was that we could engage in politics okay. and engage in it vigorously, but nonetheless ensure that uniting the nation is our paramount objective. He also brought a certain perspective to it where he said that we must not always wait on government to kickstart developmental plans and projects and that we all must get involved irrespective of who is in power. Oh, yes. He said, he said that as well. Yes. Is that a possibility given, given the history we have of uh, a new party comes in, an old project is abandoned, and a new one you know, is started and literally it's just about the same concept but we're looking at it differently because we didn't start it. And that when we complete it, it will go to the credit of these, these people or those people. Uh, this is what the two boys say. That one 
is a different argument where government change and uh, the previous government uh, would not want to continue with uh, projects that as we are seeing under this administration. How, how is it different? What you are talking about is mm. about governments, but that message is sent mm. is to the individual, brighten the corner where you are. Right. It is the individuals who rise into government and they decide that yeah, so that's a I don't want to continue this project. That's even a larger though picture. It will inure to the benefit of the people and taxes have been used to fund those projects. Yes, that's a larger picture. The small picture he's talking about is that look, you are talking about flats. You say when it rains, your area gets flooded. But you don't clean the gutter right in front of your, your house. Don't wait for government to come and say, clean your gutter. That's at the individual level. But what you are talking about is at the national level, government level, where you have governments deciding that they will not pursue programs of previous administration because credit will come to the previous administration and not them. And yet, monies that were used to kickstart those developmental projects are the taxpayers' money. Mm. And so, I think that Yes, if you broaden what he said, okay. you can, you can, you can uh, uh, say that at a national level too, some of these things are happening. Okay. But I think that basically he is saying that wherever you find yourself, okay. try to ensure that you initiate programs that will bring about the greater good. Okay. Um, an example is what I just gave. The gutter right in front of your house. Do not wait for... Uh, it, uh, the district assembly to come before you clean your data. <laughs> All these things go a long way to ensure that we okay. have a nation that is prosperous. We have a nation that is forward looking. <laughs> but you cannot also uh, 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 wish away some of the arguments some people make. The, okay. I pay my tax to government. Right. Government collects my, my tax. If I see signs of what government use my tax for, mm. then I will also contribute my quota. Right. But once I pay my tax to government, mm. government has a responsibility to fix my road, okay. to fix my, they, my, 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 my uh, the hospitals. Page, page three of the uh, Daily Guide, and Stephen, I'm coming to you now, it says, uh, it, it, the Ashantini talks about the relationship between uh, Ashantis and, and the people of the Anglo land. And I'd like to read what's in the Daily Guide. It says, using Ashantis and people of the Angola state in the Volta region as a reference point. The Otofo said the cordial relations between people uh, have suffered in modern times due to partisan politics. Retracing history, he said the friendship between the Asantis and Anglos dates back to 1824. And he says, sadly, the Asantini said in 1865, the two states signed a pact not to fight each another. And uh, each other, I beg your pardon. And sadly, Otunfo said some politicians have tried to use this hankering for political power to create unnecessary dissatisfaction among the two tribes, but insisted that the people should ignore such divisive politicians. And yesterday, uh, Togbi Sri was there, and Otunfo said, This is what I'm talking about. Why, why would the royals sign an agreement? not to fight again as far back as the 1800s and in 20 that was 1865 yes and in <coughs> in 2019 we have <coughs> some people still fueling it individually why um i think for political gain yeah, be before then um my brother lawyer said something he said that process what is in your thought before you come public as a lawyer who swore to make sure that um, his profession, he should have processed his thoughts about the economy today and what he left before speaking. That, that, that's that's, that's not for you to it. judge, it's for the oh, but he made, he made his statement, can, so I'm can, saying can, that. Can we make progress? But you know, GDP oh, from 3.7 doubled. Stevie, let's you know interest rate today. So whether he process what is in thought, Stevie, only God knows. He said that anyway, let's move on. Ago. What they are saying that on the same program. Right. Anyway. Sure. sure, thanks. Um I always have a strong um feeling that as Utunfo is saying, 
politics has done us, I think, bad more than good. Really? Yes. Politics is supposed to rather make sure that people come together, build a consensus or the collectiveness mm. we need or the collectivity we need to build our society so that all of us can live okay. in harmony socioeconomically. Right. But people want to always use dubious means, not out of competitive edge, to derive home or build the needed capital and stay in power. And as a result, they use tribal card okay. to do that or to doing that. But today I want to say this, I beg you, give me just one minute. Mm -hmm. It is a huge misconception to think that somebody is Ewe, Ashanti, Nodna, and that. Do you know by blood, physiologically, mm -hmm. there's nothing that will tell you that somebody is a Ga or Ewe? Does they, the politician know this? No, I'm saying that there's no chromosomal or genetic that, evidence. That's scientific. I'm saying that the two voice talking about politics. That's Does what, the I'm politician that. recognize that? that? What is what I'm Look, coming to it. And so when NDC, for example, says mm. Volta region is my stronghold, mm. MPP says Ashanti region is my stronghold, that connotation and divisiveness is created. That's what the two voice talking about. Bro, the fact that I say Ashanti, Volta is my stronghold mm. doesn't really illustrate the misconception that we are different people. But, but we know that the supporters it, think along those lines the supporters, sometimes. The fact that a supporter thinks that this is my stronghold doesn't really mean that we are different people. That's what I'm saying. Mm. But the politicians over-elaborate, misconstrue that whole conception mm. and get the young people into moving beyond just this thought of thinking. Mm. What I wanted to come home with is that in the olden days, years, hundreds of years back, mm. people were not traveling. Rana, if you pick three lizards, another three lizards from Greater Accra, leave three here, send three to the desert, okay. send three to the, into the forest. After 20 years, check their descend descendants or offsprings. They behave the same way. In the olden days, we were not actually traveling. We call some mm. evolution in, in biology. Right. So when the same organisms thrive in the same community for a long time. They behave the same way. Apart from that, we are simply one people. True. In terms of our chromosomes, <laughs> in terms of our genetic, in terms of our physiology, we are the same people. Thanks be to God. Development to some extent has now brought us together, said that now you cannot really differentiate between who a guy is or a shanty is, unless probably the dialect. So why do we allow the politicians to divide And us? that is where I am saying this to educate the young people that they shouldn't allow MPP, NDC, CPP leadership to use politics for their gains to divide us because we are simply one people. Look, mm. before I came to live I came to live in Accra permanently, I think 2007. I must be frank. Mm. Before I come to live here, the stories you will hear about guns, when I came, guns are one of the people I love so much. Mm. I'm, I'm being, not that I'm, I'm pretending. It, ah, so this is what they said. A friend of mine who was Ashanti was brought up in a cry here, born here. He came to KNUST. After four years, he said, ah, sticker. So all that I was hearing in Accra, it's not the way. So it's like people try so hard mm. for their parochial interest, individual interest, over the social interest, to use these things to drop home political strength and capital. Will it ever stop? We have to. We have no other alternative. It is an inevitable demand. We have to do that because we are jeopardizing our own future. Hmm. Why do we divide ourselves? Uh, about, will it ever stop? This perception and divisiveness and politics of self-centeredness and creating barriers, will it ever stop? Well, let me react to my colleagues Ignoramus comment about not processing my thoughts. I so think come that with figures. I think that I you beg should. you, come with figures. I think that no, 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 no. But you I think that, say, you said I 40 think that, and, and, that, and that is why I said I don't go that, there. No, no. But he said it. Why he that, said it? I should I, speak. I'll I, speak about it again. I, I think that <laughs> it was born out of the penchant for not being tolerant. I don't need figures to know that. Oh. This morning I couldn't eat food. As a lawyer. 
Look at look how he's talking okay. about. Okay, oh, as a priest, mean, as a priest, oh. gentlemen. Okay, as a priest, I'm all about. I think you're a friend from Africa. As a priest, gentlemen, gentlemen, we spoke, we spoke about ignorant comments. You, we spoke about ignorant comments. Gentlemen, must be stopped. We spoke about the issue. As a lawyer, you put up this behavior on set. Now you don't need to get to know the economy. You, I think you should correct him. You, you, what? I think he is rather suffering from unconscious what? He doesn't even know what he's doing. What, what, he's displaying his ego. You are disrespecting my will viewers. You ask him to keep oh, quiet? Are you saying this to me? When he said I'm ignorant, I said, I will ask him You to are wow. disrespecting my viewers. Wow. Now, you said, sorry. You said, thank you. Now, okay, let him now, you have spoken. Let him use ignorance now, and you are saying that I am disrespecting now, the, uh, now, the, the viewers. Now, this, is, this is a big now, surprise. Uh, 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 do, forget about what is happening. Let's, Thank you. Let's move on to what uh, you, are, you are asking. Yeah, it will help you anyway. The, the issue has to do with the fact that the Asante Hines <laughs> comment was a comment that was to all politicians. Right. Now, if you are a politician and you are guilty of what he has said, it only means that we need to amend our ways. It only means that um, clearly the people out there are not happy or interested in your kind of politics. Now, divisive politics, and to that extent, using ethnocentric behavior to gain political points mm -hmm. is what the Asantehini sought to make clear that, look, there has been some allegations or some behavior okay. from politicians that suggests that the Ashantis and the Evers are not, are not in good terms. But we also know that there have been some intermarriages mm -hmm. okay. between the Ashantis. We are saying, of course. You say that I don't process my mind. So why is it, of course? <laughs> Gentlemen, please. You say I don't process. Ah, why is it, of course? If you draw him no. out, he will No, but that's back. what he's saying. When I agree with don't, you, don't agree no, with I'm, me. I'm, I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm this topic. I'm, 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 you're also ruining my program. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. So keep, yes. keep. I don't. Them. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the viewers. So the viewers will ascertain <laughs> what is happening. So you have intermarriages like, yeah. between the yes, ethnic groups. These intermarriages have resulted into children. Now, it is depressing sometimes. If you are a child of any of the two, mm. and you find that you go to one side, you go to your uncle, and comments are made that are disparaging. Okay. And I think that increasingly, because of the votes that we will gain as politicians, we continue to use ethnicity, tribalism, <coughs> and ethnocentric comments to continue to, 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 to as it were, divide these people. Okay. All over the world, there will always be a stronghold for any political party. In the U.S., there are strongholds for the Democrats and the Republicans. But, it, it, but that does not tribal. mean... I don't know what tribes they have there. I don't know how they are coalescing. Okay. Indeed, in this, in, this studio, in this studio, your cameraman will coalesce if we are to allow people to coalesce towards one person here. You see them coalescing towards one person. That by congregating and supporting one political party, it means that they are at loggerheads with another group. No, it only suggests that this is a political party that can best serve their purpose. But the politicians would exploit that okay. and whip up ethnic sentiment. Well, there are instances when they will say that oh, if you vote for this person, when he comes, uh, he will target you people <coughs> and all those things. I think that time has come to heed to this call. Will it ever stop? That's what I'm saying. Time has come. There's always a point that you say, never, never, and never again. We know this type of politics does not, you know, bring in anything good. Mm -hmm. It never divides uh, the country. So at this point, if we have the statesman speak this way, what we can do when we are on programs like this is re-echo what he's saying okay. as politicians <laughs> and ensure that 
we send the message down to our people. I have followers. There's somebody who will listen to me. He has. You even have, because you are also not a politician, but you shape the views of people. Right. And so this statement coming from the Otunfo must be re echoed by some of us. Give it a positive uh, uh, spin. Mm -hmm. And for me, if we continue doing that way, we'll get to where we want to get to our right. solution. We're told that... Uh, Can I say something about the chief transit? No, we have to move on. Oh, wait. No, okay. about what he said. No, no, let me, let me give you a minute to... Yes, so. um, I think we also have to understand the role chief transit plays. And I'll use this oca occasion to say kudos to Tumfo because when it comes to dispute settlement mm. in Ashanti region, um, he's done tremendously well. Okay. When it comes to codification of our customary laws in the region, he's done fantastically well. When it comes to promotion of social economic development in the region, he's done fabulously well. He's done so much, especially in the area of education, mm -hmm. which is very key in any society for attaining long-term economic growth and stability. So I would like to say that, Nana, Ayuko, you've done so much work. Great. And he also admonished the uh, traditional leaders, other traditional leaders, to use their position to uh, help all of us to develop and not be uh, misbehaving. Well, the final one we want to take a look at the families of the kidnapped girls disappointed in the police. The families are <coughs> of three kidnapped girls in Sekendi Takrani metropolis, uh, metropolis in the western region have expressed displeasure about the lack of information from the police concerning investigations on the abducted girls. They have also expressed disappointment and dissatisfaction at the pace at which the police are carrying out the investigation, indicating that keeping the families in the dark about the whereabouts of the girls is having a huge emotional impact on the family. About three weeks ago, the police CID boss told us that they know where the girls are. Subsequently, uh, MP for Second D was here, and he said, look, <coughs> if you know where the girls are, release them to their parents. <laughs> Why are you keeping them? Now the families are up in arms again. They say, look, we are disappointed in you. It's been since November last year. What are you doing? Do they have a genuine concern? Um, I think, um, to some extent, I have a twofold reaction to right. what the family said. Um, if you say you know where they are, okay. how many months now? In that respect, the family, of course, their outcry right. is, is, is genuine and is warranted or is necessary. It is extremely relevant that they, they, they pour out their heart to the police. Okay. The other side that I think they have to exercise patience. It's about communication between them and the police. Okay. Because these are security matters. Mm -hmm. And in any organization, we call something asymmetric information management. Mm -hmm. When we say asymmetric information management, what it means is that it's not every stakeholder, be it internal or external, mm -hmm. that, is, that is supposed to be privy to every piece of information, whether relevant or irrelevant. Sometimes when you're privy to relevant or irrelevant pieces of information, mm -hmm. it will actually bring every effort to cost 90. So I think in that sense, they should exercise patience. Mm -hmm. But I think the police, I wouldn't say they are doing well. It's not easy. I mean, these mm -hmm. things happen even, they are more profound in the developed countries. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of kidnapping, in terms of insecurity mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they mm -hmm. are more profound in the developed countries. Right. They have better gadgets, better security system, sometimes even 15, 20 years. Sometimes swiftly they get it within a day. I don't know what the police are doing, so I can't say they are doing well or they are not doing well. Mm -hmm. But I will urge the police to upscale their performances and make sure that this thing we can draw curtains on that. The family, they are going through a lot. And I sympathize with months. them. Yes. How can you give birth to your child, take care of the child to this level, and somebody just come in, a scrupulous person, a kept person, just come in, comes in, and then your child is there or not. You remember what happens in Nigeria? Mm. The, the, what's, the, is it Boko, Boko Haram? Boko Haram. Mm. What they did to them. And sometimes, if they, are, girls. if they are girls, sometimes they really met out to them mm. a lot of 
I mean, aberrant behaviors that I wouldn't want to mention them ethically on your show. Mm -hmm. So we are begging the police, and it's not only the police, all stakeholders, those who have relevant information, pieces of information, they should do their best. Because I think the family, they are going through a lot. I mean, you cannot, I, mm -hmm. I wonder how they live. It, me, it would have been very difficult. The, the family uh, spokesperson, the spokesperson for the family says that ever since the matter happened, no single government official has come to them to empathize with them. And, and they say that they, they see the government has distanced itself from them. That's what the graphic is reporting. Oh, oh, if and that true. if somebody has come to if, if it talk is, to them, they if, would have... If it is very true, mm. sorry, if it is true, then it's very unfortunate. If it's true, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. I can't say if it's true, um, I will apologize on behalf of the, of the family, mm. on behalf of the government, mm. because I'm a government appointee. I'm saying if it is true, I'm making a conditional statement. A conditional statement, if it is true, I think we are very sorry. Because I know the government is doing a lot. Okay. I know security agencies that the president has been talking to. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, making sure that they, they, they find where these children are, they bring to book those who okay. are involved, okay. and the president is doing so much. But as the family said, the communication to the family, probably, okay. some of them will think because security matters. Mm. But for us not to go there, if only it is true, we are very sorry. And of course, better late than none. Okay. Very soon, they will see some of us there. Uh, Council, the, the disappointment it doesn't come as a surprise to many people. They think that, well, it's been nine months, they have a genuine call, but Child Rights International, right up here, is asking that the Minister for uh, Gender and also the Interior Minister be invited to Parliament about this particular matter. Is that, coupling that with this, is that a proposal you want to support? In some serious jurisdictions, this would have resulted in the invitation of the minister to appear before parliament and to answer questions. And the interior minister to appear before the parliament to address some of these concerns. But the shock is not only from government officials, because I know the president has not mentioned this at all, has not oh, that's taken, not true. it's true, it's that's true. That's not true? It's true. Oh, please. In the State of the Nation Say address, you don't know. in the State of the Nation address, oh, wow. uh, the, before the State of the Nation was, was, was read by the president, uh, relatives of this um, people, these uh, kidnapped children, were suggesting that the president should make statements to that effect. And so some of us were waiting to hear the statements that the president will make in ensuring that we find out where these children are. But to my surprise, the president did not, in the State of Nation address, mention the issue right <clears throat> relatives parents of the kidnapped children have every right to be apprehensive they have every right to be concerned and they have every right not to trust the police any longer um the police wouldn't that wouldn't that be an overkill no, but if you wait for so long and you don't get signals, mm. that indicates that the people are on the job. Mm -hmm. It will come to a point that you would give up and think that nothing is happening. Mm. What I am shocked about is that normally the police are quick to deal with matters that touch on they themselves. Um, you, I think you were in this country when that uh, police training instructor, they call him, uh, oh, uh, uh, he was that instructor. Kweko Ninja. Ninja. 
was killed and buried underground, and I'm told they even built a concrete uh, on, 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 on where he was buried. Mm. But the police were able to get to the bottom to discover it. I do not see this kind of agency mm. that is required by the police being shown in this, in, this, in this particular case. I think that the police are taking it as and when probably people start speaking about it. Mm. But the last, what is it, the last press, t uh, co uh, press conference mm. that the police had on the kidnapped children, mm -hmm. I must tell you, it was one of the most useless oh, press conferences. Uh, I, I think, uh, it was wh wh why are you saying that? If you are in the shoes of the relatives of the kidnapped children, mm -hmm. you, just, you just read, you just made reference to that statement and said that they said they know where they are, but uh, they will not show where they are, and indicated that they are still alive. Uh, is the NDC involved in the kidnapping? They no. are still alive. Uh, let, by now, no, no, let's, let's, now let's, you, I think, I think now, his point no, 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 is no, 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 no. Let's, let's now, not politicize now, this. Now, ah, you, you notice that, president, now, you notice that, let's not politicize Your intolerance is too much. When you are let's talking, I keep quiet. It's not everything that you say that I agree to. Steven, if somebody mentions the president, it is not political. The president is a magnanimous benefactor. He is the father for all, and he is the president of the land. And what is chairman is extremely remarkable. What is this? Called integral part of our social community. What, what is this? What is this? So you so want to politicize the kidnapping? He of the is girls? politicizing is it. He is. Is that what you want to do? No, he is doing it. No, no, no. Wow. This is this that is, the president this, this, is even okay. mentioning of. This is sad. How come you say the okay. president is not mentioning of? This is sad. Come sad. Come Look, so finish your point. Your intolerance <laughs> is is unbelievable. But the deception you, and the lies you, you, are too you much. Have, who, who are those who lie? You. You Kazo. lied your way to Kazo. power. Kazo. Please. Now, <laughs> the police must begin to show these relatives of the kidnapped children that they are actually on the beat. Okay. Because for, for a relative of a kidnapped child, they will want updates. And these updates must indicate what you, the police, are saying, that mm. you will soon get to the bottom of the matter. If you have a police uh, press statement or press conference come out to say that we know where they are, we will not uh, indicate close Mm -hmm. uh, uh, indicate to the public where they are. We are not talking about the public. Okay. We are talking about how to assuage the pains okay. and, and fears mm. of the relatives. So what is the engagement between you and the relatives? We are not talking about you and the public. Who, you and the relatives of these kidnapped children. What, what have you been telling them? The information may not be for the public, I agree. But for the immediate family members, mm. What is the constant engagement? Well, maybe they're they are, not doing maybe, that. Maybe they are, they are concerned that if they give information to them, it will travel and, as Stephen said, asymmetrical. If you put everybody in the know, then you're jeopardizing you are the investigation. You're not putting everybody in the know. You have coded messages. You know how to, they, have, they have psychologists. Mm -hmm. The police service have psychologists. They know how to put out information which is critical but can be summarized in a way. Look, is the I don't know whether you've gone home, you've you've left home, gone home, uh, you've left the, the office, gone home, and your child has just stepped out, and you can't find where he is. Mm. That alone, yeah. what it does to you, uh, that That's alone, the trauma, the trauma, yeah. let alone nine months. So the police must engage with the relatives. We're not talking about the general public. I don't need that information. But the relatives must be engaged thoroughly so that you can assuage their pains and fears. That's what I am advocating. David, final bite on, on this particular one. You, you say you are apologizing on behalf of the government if what the graphic reports that nobody has gone. If it is uh, true. If it is true, it is you, true, you are apologizing. I don't think it's true, but if it is true, okay. I cannot say it's not true. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing is that we need the kids, the family, they need their children. Right. We need to do our best. Uh, one thing that I agree with uh, lawyer Amaleba is the fact that, yes, 
it's not every piece of information the police can actually communicate mm. to the family, but probably their constant relationship with them and managing their whole being psychologically. Okay. You know, we have psychotherapy mm. because these things can traumatize them, can put them in, in the state that the whole family probably will, will cease to progress. I mean, a lot of things in the family will be impaired. Okay. So I think the police, if they are not doing it, again, if, because sometimes they might be doing it, but not to the level the family is expecting. Right. They should <clears throat> upscale their performance. That's what we are saying. And also pray to God. Okay. Some of us that believe in God, we think God can perform a miracle. Mm. Three things that we need to do. We have to pray. We have to have faith. We have to act. Acting all stakeholders must come on board. I said those who have relevant pieces of information. The police, even this time, we should, we should let the army come in. We should let all of them, all the security we, agencies. We, we brought the, and the then, Americans and the British to re-arrest the, the suspect who broke out uh, from the Takra cell. Oh, the government did that? Yes. The government yes. of today, it Nanado's was, government. It was, it was made public. Oh, that's fantastic. It was made public. So it means we are making the needed effort. Okay. But I think, as we a are after, also... After the suspect had broken out of cell with the assistance of a police officer who was supposed to be keeping watch over him, uh, that's, that should be worries. Yeah, yeah, very. But you know that the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, we mm. had Judas. I mean, no system is perfect. No system. Look anyway. at the media. Some of you are doing well. Some are look at politicians, MPP and D. Some of us Let's are check out some of the well. messages that so we have like that. this morning. And uh, Tilapia starts us off. Uh, Tilapia is talking about, well, national projects, political uh, rejects. And he's talking about the abandoned Saglemi housing project. And it's, uh, it's become a den for goats and sheep and chicken and everything. And the chicken, is, uh, the goat says, meh. Uh, a bit of relevant cartoon here this morning while we check out some of the messages. Anyway, so we're starting off. Okay, we're starting at this point. And it says, good morning, Johnny and your panelists. We all wish the chief imam a happy birthday and may Allah continue to bless him. Aram, Adenta Newside. Good morning, please. I don't know what you're discussing today because our lights have been off from 7 p.m. and uh, they're about till now in Banana Inn. There are times we enjoy light on for five, only five minutes within 24 hours. Please, if you don't, uh, if you doubt what I'm saying, send your reporters to our area and interview people in the area. Please follow up this for us. Thank you, Yakuma in Banana Inn. Congrats, Sheikh. Sharibu 2 on turning 100. You are a symbol of Islam, a true Muslim and a man of peace. Live for another 100 years to be an example to the partisan uh, Stephen Amwa and Abraham Amaleba uncle at Ato. Uh, I echo to for the case of today. A level of unity in Ghana. Congrats, Uncle Ato. Good morning, Johnny. May God bless the age of the new chief, the chief imam, and may he continue to be a symbol of peace for all in this country. Gilbert Yimbil in Tamale. Aziz Donai Wa says, the national chief imam has shown the way of togetherness, peace, and unique standing in Ghana. The question is, will our Christians now allow Muslims to marry our Christian sisters without victimization? Aziz Donai is asking. Uh, Aziz, I thought you were married already. And vice versa. The police rushed with their uh, press conference. They are talking too much, and I don't know who they want to please. Uh, tell the CID boss to stop uh, work and stop uh, the too much engagement. Result will speak for itself. Aram in Adenta News says, uh, uh, Madam, uh, keep to the work. We're, we're wrapping up, but this is a cartoon in relation to the subject under discussion and uh, we're just wrapped up uh, so tilapia says that tiwa savage so when as a question as a police officer a female police officer hanging on the ceiling and a gps with a phone it says madam our girls are still not back as promised or location change that's what tilapia is asking people are concerned about it anyway but thank you very much gentlemen for your time steven amwa is the ceo of maslock thank you steve for your time and Abraham Amaliba is a lawyer uh, and a member of the NDC's legal team. You know, Abraham, I'm thank a, you. Because I'm not a man of positions, okay. you know, I have my new position as a director of legal affairs. Director of legal I'm affairs. Not, I'm not bothered. Ah, director of legal affairs. affairs. If you don't refer That's to me, me as know. that, I'm okay. not bothered. Direct, I'm not, director I'm not like who wants it. Director of legal affairs. Anyway, when are you back in court? <laughs>